Hello, and welcome to the 2013 How Far Away Is It video book update. During the year, I accumulate information on the discoveries made during the year, and each January, I'll put together those that impacted our story. This year, we'll cover things that range from the solar system to the cosmos. One of the most important things that happened last year was that we discovered that Voyager 1 has left the heliosphere. I have updated the entire heliosphere segment and re-uploaded it, so you can watch that if you'd like. We'll see a bipolar planetary nebula aligned in the sky near the central bulge. We'll take a look at the oldest globular cluster, a sneezing birth nebula and some interesting news from our galactic halo. Outside the galaxy, we'll take a look at the Magellanic Stream, a 40-year mystery that was solved in 2013, some magnificent spiral galaxies, some new supernova information, and a couple of additional colliding galaxies. In the cosmos, we'll cover a supermassive galaxy cluster that has warped the light from behind it into a very interesting shape. So we'll show you that. Uh, we also will cover some information about the nearest quasar to us. And we've discovered the oldest Type 1a supernova. And you remember how important those are for the distance ladder. We'll conclude with the launch of Gaia, a new satellite that will map a billion stars while it rotates around the L2 Lagrange point that we covered in the heliosphere. So again, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. In our section on the heliosphere, we covered Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. One of the great things to happen in 2013 was that we discovered that in 2012, Voyager 1 left the heliopause and entered interstellar space. For that, I have updated the heliosphere segment, so I recommend that you watch it. You will actually hear what it sounds like outside the influence of our sun. In our segment on nearby stars, we covered our closest neighbor, Proxima Centauri. Here's a recent photo of the star taken by Hubble. Although it looks bright through the eye of Hubble, Proxima Centauri is not visible to the naked eye. Its average luminosity is very low, and it is quite small compared to other stars, at only about one-eighth the mass of the Sun. Proxima Centauri is in for a long, long life. Astronomers predict that this star will remain a main sequence star for another four trillion years, a thousand times longer than our Sun. We noted in our coverage of the star Farmelhalt that planets form in the debris rings around new stars. Here the Hubble Space Telescope has found signs of Earth-like planets in an unlikely place the atmosphere of a pair of burnt-out stars in a nearby star cluster. This illustration is an artist's impression of the thin, rocky debris disk discovered around the two Hades white dwarfs. Seeing evidence of asteroids points to the possibility of Earth-sized planets in the same system. Asteroids are the building blocks for major planets. Once rocky embryos the size of asteroids are built, planets are sure to follow. Point eight billion years. But here is a nearby star that at first glance looks like it is 16 billion years old. That would make it older than the universe. 
Hubble astronomers are coming to grips with this paradox by improving the precision of the observations used to estimate the age of this Methuselah star. Hubble has helped refine the calculation to 14.5 billion years, plus or minus 0.8 billion. stages of star formation, when a lot of gas and dust is being rapidly sucked into a newly forming binary star. The Hubble Space Telescope was used to confirm the Spitzer observations and revealed the detailed structure around the protostar. This video, created from a sequence of images from Hubble, shows a pulse of light emanating from the protostar. Most if not all of this light results from scattering off circumstellar dust in the protostellar envelope. Up is unusual as it is shrouded by a nebula, thick, dark clouds of gas and dust. Hubble observed this star and its murky environment, capturing snapshots at different stages in its cycle, producing this time-lapse video. The dusty environment around RS Pup enables this effect to be shown with stunning clarity. As the star expands and brightens, we see some of the light after it is reflected from progressively more distant shells of gas and dust surrounding the star creating the illusion of gas moving outwards. You'll remember from our segment on planetary nebula that they represent exploding stars at the end of their red giant life. NGC 6537, also known as the Red Spider Nebula, is a bipolar planetary nebula with material flowing out in two primary directions, like my favorite, the Butterfly Nebula. In general, the directions for the flows from planetary nebula are quite random. But near the central bulge of our galaxy, where the Red Spider is located, Hubble has found that bipolar planetary nebula appear to be strangely aligned in the sky. Astronomers suggest that this behavior could have been caused by the presence of strong magnetic fields as the central bulge formed. Also, Hubble observations have revealed huge waves sculptured into the Red Spider Nebula. This warm and windy planetary nebula harbors one of the hottest stars in the universe and its powerful stellar winds generate waves 100 billion kilometers high. Hot blue stars and cooler golden stars can be seen swarming together in the image. As well as stars, M15 was the first cluster known to host a planetary nebula, and it has been found to have a rare type of intermediate black hole at its center. Intermediate mass black holes are thought to form from either the merging of smaller stellar mass black holes, or as a result of a collision between massive stars in dense clusters. A third possibility is that they were formed during the Big Bang. 
In terms of mass, they lie between the more commonly found stellar mass and supermassive types of black holes that we discussed in our segment on the Milky Way. of gas have shaped the turbulent surroundings, creating structures known as herbig harrow objects. You'll remember that we covered these in our segment on the Orion Nebula. Soon this star will stop sneezing and grow up to be a star like the sun. On the Milky Way, we covered a number of characteristics of the galaxy's halo. Here's a new one. Peeping deep into the vast stellar halo that envelops our galaxy, astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope have uncovered tantalizing evidence for the possible existence of a shell of stars that are a relic of the long-ago birth of the Milky Way. Hubble was used to precisely measure, for the first time ever, the sideways motion of a small sample of stars located far from the galaxy's center. Their unusual lateral motion is circumstantial evidence that the stars may be remnants of a shredded galaxy that was gravitationally ripped apart by the Milky Way billions of years ago. These stars support the idea that the Milky Way grew, in part, through the accretion of smaller galaxies. In our segment on Andromeda and the local group, we covered the large and small Magellanic Cloud orbiting dwarf galaxies. Astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope have solved the 40-year-long mystery of the origin of the Magellanic Stream, a long ribbon of gas stretching nearly halfway around the Milky Way. The new Hubble observations reveal that most of this stream was stripped from the small Magellanic Cloud some two billion years ago with a smaller portion originating more recently from its larger neighbor. In the combined radio and visible light image, the gaseous stream is shown in pink. The Milky Way is the light blue band in the center of the image. The brown clumps are interstellar dust clouds in our galaxy. The Magellanic clouds are the white regions at the bottom right. Astrophotographer Robert Gendler has taken science data from the Hubble Space Telescope and combined it with his own ground-based observations to assemble a photo illustration of the magnificent spiral galaxy M106. It is a class of galaxy called a Seifert galaxy. Seifert galaxies account for about 10% of all galaxies and are some of the most intensely studied objects in astronomy, as they are thought to be powered by the same phenomena that occur in quasars, although they are closer and less luminous than quasars. These galaxies have supermassive black holes at their centers, which are surrounded by accretion disks of infalling material. The accretion disks are believed to be the source of the observed ultraviolet radiation. This spiral galaxy played host to a supernova explosion back in 2012, known as SN 2012IM. Now another star has exploded, forming supernova SN 2013EK, visible in this image as the prominent star-like bright object just slightly above and to the right of the galaxy's center. The observations that make up this new image were taken on the 19th of August 2013 and aim to pinpoint the location of this new explosion more precisely. It is so close to where SN 2012IM was spotted that the two events are thought to be linked. The chance of two completely independent supernovae so close together 
exploding within one year of one another is a very unlikely event. Bright pink nebula almost completely encircle this spiral galaxy. In our video book segment on colliding galaxies, we covered rings like this one. The ring structure and the galaxy's distorted spiral shape result from a smaller galaxy scoring a cosmic bullseye, hitting the center of NGC 922 some 330 million years ago. As the small galaxy passed through the middle of 922, it set up ripples that disrupted the clouds of gas and triggered the formation of new stars whose radiation then lit up the remaining gas. The bright pink color of the resulting nebula is a characteristic sign of this process. Despite the immense number of galaxies in the universe, this is one of only a handful known in our cosmic neighborhood. The Cartwheel Galaxy, next, being the most famous example. Lying about 500 million light years away, the cartwheel shape of this galaxy is the result of a violent galactic collision. The striking ring-like feature is a direct result of a smaller intruder galaxy, possibly one of the two objects to the left of the ring, that careen through the core of the host galaxy. Like a rock tossed into a lake, the collision sent a ripple of energy into space, plowing gas and dust in front of it. Expanding at 200,000 miles per hour, this cosmic tsunami leaves in its wake a firestorm of new star creation. Presumably, the Cartwheel Galaxy was a normal spiral galaxy like our Milky Way before the collision. This spiral structure is beginning to re-emerge as seen in the faint arms or spokes between the outer ring and the bullseye-shaped nucleus. You'll remember the Einstein rings we discussed in our segment on the cosmos. Here again we see how the gravitational field surrounding this massive cluster of galaxies acts as a natural lens in space to brighten and magnify the light coming from very distant background galaxies. In this photo, the image of a spiral galaxy at the upper left has been stretched and mirrored into a shape similar to that of a simulated alien from the classic 1970s computer game Space Invaders. The galaxy is visible twice because its light followed two separate paths around Abel 68 before reaching us. You'll remember Quasar Markarian in our How Far Away Is It segment on the cosmos. Quasars are the intensely powerful centers of distant active galaxies powered by a huge disk of particles surrounding a supermassive black hole. As matter from the disk falls inward, some quasars, including this one, have been observed to fire off superfast jets into the surrounding space. In this picture, one of these jets appears as a dusty streak measuring some 200,000 light years in length. Despite its great distance, 3C273 is still one of the closest quasars to our home. It was the first quasar ever to be identified and was discovered in the early 1960s. Quasars are capable of emitting hundreds or even thousands of times the entire energy output of our galaxy, making them some of the most luminous and energetic objects in the entire universe. Of these very bright objects, 3C273 is the brightest in our skies. If it were located 30 light years from our own planet, over seven times the distance between Earth and Proxima Centauri, it would appear as bright as the sun in the daytime sky. If you recall, Type 1a supernova represent one of our most important standard candles because they are so bright, we can see them from very far away. In 2013, Hubble broke the record in the quest to find the furthest Type 1a with the discovery of SN UDS 10 WIL a supernova that exploded more than 10 billion years ago, at a time when the universe was in its early formative years and stars were being born at a rapid rate. The image at the far left 
shows the host galaxy without the supernova. The middle image, taken a year later, reveals the galaxy with the supernova. The supernova cannot be seen because it is too close to the center of the host galaxy. To detect a supernova, astronomers subtract the first image from the middle image to see the light from the supernova alone, shown in the image at the far right. You'll remember that we spent some time on the James Webb Space Telescope that's in development and scheduled for launch in 2018. Well, we have a major new telescope that was launched in late 2013 called Gaia. Here we see Gaia's blast off on a Soyuz rocket from Europe's spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. It is now in its operational orbit around the L2 Lagrange point, 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. We covered Lagrange points in our segment on the heliosphere. Gaia is an ambitious mission to chart a three-dimensional map of our galaxy. Gaia will provide unprecedented positional and radial velocity measurements with the accuracies needed to produce a stereoscopic and kinematic census of about one billion stars in our galaxy. If you recall from our segment on nearby stars, Hipparchus recorded parallax information for 118,000 stars. Gaia will do over 8,000 times this number. Gaia will map each of the billion stars 70 times to record their position, movement, and characteristics. The key to this is the billion pixel camera at the heart of the dual telescope. This animation illustrates how the camera works. With its two telescopes, Gaia looks at two patches of sky at the same time. Mirrors guide the light to the billion pixel camera. As Gaia rotates, the images move across the camera. As a star's image moves across the camera, its brightness and position are measured. Then the spectral footprint is recorded. The final camera area measures the star's radial velocity towards or away from us. For each star, the data is compressed and stored aboard Gaia. Around two million stars are examined in this way every hour, creating 50 gigabytes of data every day. This data is then transmitted to the ground station where teams of astronomers examine it. This animation illustrates how Gaia will scan the sky during its all-sky survey. Here's a website where you can help Hubble scientists in various activities, including finding the age of star clusters in the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy, hunting for planets around other stars, searching for star clusters in the Andromeda Galaxy, and much more. If you're interested, take a look and get engaged. And don't forget, every How Far Away Is It video segment, including this one, has a document with the text, pictures, and notes located on howfarawayisit.com slash documents. As we did with the video book itself, here are the links to the Hubble and other locations where I found the information contained in this 2013 update. These are the places where you can go to find out more information. Goodbye.